Hello, Piano Tech users. Uh, I guess lots of people watching this right now, hearing me talk, will have already downloaded Piano Tech 8 and enjoyed its uh, enhanced engine. And uh, this is not a video about how amazing the Piano Tech engine sounds. I mean, I've had it since version 2, and uh, I thought it sounded cool back then just because of the mad engine you can stretch and pull and do crazy things with this physically modeled lump of dsp it's beautiful i have always enjoyed it and uh, a few months ago i this is probably nothing to do with anything but a few months ago i emailed them with some uh, requests just because i just like to have things made better and one of the things I asked for was a sidechain, was an input into the engine. Now, I've got no idea whether this in influenced this additional um, function in Piano Tech 8. I've no idea. But you never know. So uh, I'm quite, quite pleased that this is now in. And I'm sorry you can't see the joy on my face, but uh, I was pretty pleased that this happened. Now... This is a strange bit of technology because it's not like a normal oscillator or anything really. It's like real, it's kind of a model of real world stuff. Now, Piano Tech's really cool. Um, it's a load, of, it's like a string model and a kind of um, resonance model of the um, board that sits behind the strings, the kind of frame that the whole thing is made out of, this lump of metal, and it sits within a wooden frame. And they've done a, an amazing job of modelling all these crazy different pianos and shapes and rooms. Obviously, we know we can do this crazy stuff with the microphones and move the mics around and do mad things. It's, it's insane. And um, obviously, I'm not going to talk about... I'm not, this, this isn't a kind of watch me play beautiful piano music in this a crazy new beautiful engine uh, video. That's not what is happening here right now. What we're going to look at is only is the side chain and i i've had a look around and i haven't seen any other videos to talk about this so i want to focus on only that that is the only focus of this video so what is it what is it it's an input at the moment in logic i've got it set up to send the output from uh, to, to be to, to receive the input just to, to receive the input from the bus that i'm sending a kind of fake band into and uh, this is what uh with this is, this is what it sounds like. I mean, it's, it's, it's a generic load of loops from Logic. And some non-distracting, crappy piano playing. Anyway, that's just... I needed some material to kind of show what the interesting parts of this little feature are. So, what, what am I talking about? Why is it so... Why is it so interesting to me, although that's not really of uh, interest to you, but why should it be of interest to you as a sound designer or maybe even a mix engineer? Because this kind of, this is cool anyway. All right, so I'm just going to go. Let's go. Let's look at Sidechain Piano 8, P Piano Tech 8. Uh, right. That's the sound of the sound. That's the sound of the band in the room. Um, so what is the Sidechain? Let's mute this bus. Right, you can hear that. So that's the sound of only the piano. That's the sound of the single mic on the piano. If I move it, you can hear the signal change. Okay, so that's like, uh, right. So what's the advantage? What, what, what's going on here? Why, why do, why have it? How can we exploit it? So what we can do is, if you can hear right now, we can hear the band coming through the piano. Uh, is that, I've only got the piano happening here now. If I mute that. Oh, I've got a bit of there's a reverb send as well. Ah, right here we go. So that's that's the piano. That's the sound of only the piano. But you can hear the band as well, right? That's because they're going through the side chain and through a kind of virtual mic in the piano. Or not a virtual mic in the piano. They, mod art haven't really explained to us what the stimulating 
what the side chain input is stimulating, what, where it's actually, what's going on with it. Now, let's look at this function here. Here's where my mouse is, over here. And if I click this little button here, let's stop that generic music from drolling on. Um, this little switch here switches between well, it just gives you the ability to see the external audio controls. Okay, so what, what are the external audio controls? Two, two. There's one. So we can hear basically the dry input that's by now bypassing the um, kind of physically modelled environment, just going straight out. So we want it entirely wet, obviously, because we want to hear this wonderful stuff that's going to happen. And we can route the audio. This is the this is one of the power moves. Uh, so we can tell Piano Tech to direct the input towards the strings, which is like the strings, the notes, uh, or the wood. And the wood means we're bypassing the strings, so we won't hear the strings resonating because we are some sort of magically through the power of physical modelling, not the strings aren't vibrating, even though we've got a load of noise happening in this piano cabinet, which is nuts. And we, obviously I'm not going to um, do it now because I've got this this particular one set up, but you can just flick through different pianos and the, all the pianos obviously have different shapes and different cavity sizes and uh, depending on which um, piano you've got selected, you'll get a, a different kind of cabinet. It's almost like running your sound through an impulse response of which that impulse response was captured inside a piano with all the strings dampened. If any of those words made sense to you, that's kind of what's going on here, as, as best as we can tell. But I expect that impulse response that I spoke about in that previous sentence in this situation is more, in the, in the, in the piano tech domain, more some kind of modal resonance model. I suspect. We don't really know because they don't tell us these things. But I'm going to switch that back to the strings because that's what this is going to focus on. So what happens if I just stop playing the piano? I'm going to mute the notes. We can still hear the room, the instruments in the room stimulating the strings. Now, how can how do we know they're stimulating the strings? This is how we can tell they're stimulating the strings, because if we adjust some of the qualities of those strings, it changes. So first of all, let's just turn up the resonance. Well, it's the sympathetic resonance. Can you hear that kind of... As a a metallic kind of pinch that's happening. So if we turn all the, all the resonance, all the resonance of the whole unit is now reduced. We can stimulate it again. So the soundboard makes the strings kind of resonate longer. Listen to this. I mean, it's not pretty, but isn't it interesting? I mean, it is pretty. I find it beautiful. So the, all of these knobs here, apart from, I believe, I couldn't get these to... Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're doing anything to the sound. But these two sliders kind of tell the engine to uh, stimulate either the notes that are related to the income, to the kind of enhance to 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 resonate the harmonics that are related to the incoming sound. Oh, hold on, isn't sympathetic resonance? I think this is actually to do with the area around the strings, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, you can hear 
I mean, have, have a look at the manual for an absolute definition, but I just want to demonstrate how much you can filter and change and add kind of craziness to an input if you input it to the sidechain of the new piano tech. So all of that stuff makes a difference. String length, resonance, duplex scale. Listen, what's going on? Yeah, they're definitely not making a difference. But let's, uh, does that? Yeah, I don't know, who knows why that's making a difference? It is changing the sound. But we can also, I think the tuning side here, the actual tuning of the strings makes a subtle difference as well. So anyway, what, let's put another mic in the space. I only put one in because I kind of wanted to focus on uh, the sound rather than the shape of the, this, the stereo spread of the sound. So I'm going to keep it on one mic actually, just to keep it simple. So we can hear what we're listening to. And I mean, this, all this, let's just turn off, turn off the drums. It's like some crazy room that doesn't exist because it's the shape of a piano with uh, like s tightly strung string doors. Anyway, uh, one of the main things is that nothing in the voicing area works because this part's to do with the string being hit by the hammer and obviously we have, there's no hammer being involved in until I start playing the piano again by turning the MIDI these MIDI areas on. Until then, there's no, there's no, there's no hammers being involved. I don't think the spectrum. I couldn't hear. I did a lot of aggressive tweaking. I mean, I can't hear any. Can you? I can't hear any difference. I don't think there's anything going on there. So let's just set them back to you. And obviously this is hammer noise, doesn't make any difference. Strike point, again, a hammer thing, doesn't make any difference. I thought it might because it might be where the string is stimulated by the sidechain input. But I'm pretty sure nothing's going on there. Just a hammer thing. And obviously there's no soft pedal down at the moment, so that's not going to make any difference. But there you go. There's the uh, that's the craziness of of this particular side chain, the new side chain input to piano tech. So that's what you can do with it. There's the the design side of it. You can muck around with, and let's just turn that over. And the string, the kind of tuning side of it. It won't go too much into this, but you can do obviously mucking around with the string per string tuning per octave will change the way that the um, sound exists and you know whatever you're pushing through it to stimulate it uh, for example because it could just be just chuck some drums through it what happens if you just do you know what I mean it will basically capture the sound of whatever you're putting through it and put it in a piano There'll be areas of it that... Areas you can tease interest out of. I mean, maybe if we just turn them up like 20,000 times. What happens if we just thump the strings really hard? Let's just try... Pick up that. You can hear what's going on. Pretty nice. I'm just going to pull that main volume down a bit because I don't want the limiter to kick in, but I also don't want the sound to be clipped internally by Piano Tech. Uh, but yeah, there you go. 
that's that's putting drums through there. And right, so purpose. What's the purpose? One of the advantages, one of the ways you can use this to your advantage as a mix engineer is that so we've got a room maybe I should meet that I'm going to meet that room for the moment so what have we got let's turn So you can hear the piano coming through, uh, the band coming through the piano. You, you can hear that. I, I can, this is a fact, you can hear it. So how can we take advantage of that? As a mix engineer, if you think about if you want the sound of a band in a room, like as, as realistically as you can, you'll be positioning them in your beautiful, maybe um, binaural um, panning things and putting them through your ex crazy expensive reverb systems to make it sound like they're in a particular s shape, space, and size of space, which has a certain which has certain reflective and absorb ab absorptive qualities. What feeding the band sound into the side chain of the piano does it it basically it adds reality to your space. It's adding the fact that in a real room the piano would be stimulated by the drums and the bass and the loud vocal coming through PA and the guitar guy and whatever else is happening in that room. The strings will be stimulated by all those noises. Now, this is a massively exagger... I can, you know, we can massively... Me, you, any of us can massively exaggerate the effect of that sound going through as if it's kind of coming out, as if the strings are being vibrated by um, a, an external unseen force, which is kind of what we're doing. That, um, you know, we, you, you can balance that to be completely unrealistic, which is, let's do that. It's like completely unrealistic. Or, or is it? We don't know. Whoever, who is, who's ever put their head inside a piano and uh, rooted music through it uh, and ensured that the, well, without this, yeah. Has, has anyone ever put a, piano, uh, a speaker inside a piano and used it as a cabinet to shape... I mean, probably people have. As by the by, we're looking at a digital version of this. So, massively exaggerate it. It sounds like... I mean, you can hear it, and you kind of don't want to hear it. So, let's put everything back to normal again. But, actually, just having... So, I'm going to bring the band back in, and I'm going to turn off the side chain into the piano. Actually, I'm just going to reset these so we get a bit of a normal piano back okay bring back the band turn up the piano so it's part of now I'm going to turn off there's something missing I'm gonna bring it back is there something missing I'm gonna let it go and the point is is it's subtle but it's gluey and you it will it adds realism it's like uh, miking up the double bass player, whatever you might have in your room, and that being stimulated um, and having the body shaken by a guy next to you playing drums and shaking the air um, with with the kick. So it's like, all this kind of interference stuff adds reality to your to the reality of your mix. If you want the mix to sound like it's in a, happening in a real space and all the instruments are interplaying off each other, and you, but you can't do it in the in the real world then you want to be looking at these kinds of tricks to add glue to, uh, to the space that you're creating. Anyway, so that's kind of good. That's kind of a good reason for using it. That's a, that's a kind of um, useful, in double quotes, way of using this sidechain. I'm 
interested in doing other stuff with it. So I'm going to move over to my other chord set here and see what I've got going on. So I'm going to mute everything, just have the drums going through. Let's have a look at this pattern here. What have I got here? A load of super quiet notes. Mainly because I don't want them, I don't want the hammers to be striking the strings. I just want the strings to be open. Why do I want the strings to... Uh, resonant filter? Resonant network. So let... I'm going to turn it up in my room because I can't hear it. Okay. Can you hear that? That D shape? I mean, there's the D shape. These notes, I'll hit a note. So you can hear that chord playing. There the notes have gone down. It's, it, it's a D minor or something. I think that's the key the song is in. I'm just, all that's happening now is the drums are going through the side chain and it's creating, the piano is respond because I've got those notes down and kind of technically the strings are open. So the, the dampers, the, the, the hammers, I struck the string, the hammers are kind of pulled back, the, the hammers struck the string, the virtual string, very, very lightly, and then re pulled back again because that's how the mechanics of a piano work. But yet the string remains open because the keys are still down. So ultimately this, they should be silent. If I just, but, you, but they're not, you can hear something happening. What's, I mean, all that's coming out, that's just, so if we just hear the piano, the note, and look, this, it's faded away. There's, barely, there's nothing there in the in this in the in the in the, in the readout. So the, the notes died away, but we can trigger those strings to be stimulated by shoving stuff in the side chain as long as we've got the notes down. And that that for me, that's that's. That's a secret. That's a secret that not many, until obviously every man and woman and child on planet Earth has seen my informative video about this incredible sidechain secret. I don't even know how to name this video. But just this, having that D, I haven't got a pitch bend available to me at the moment. Um, let's see if I can... Do it with a. Huh? Didn't realise that was in piano tech. It's just. Where is it? It's here. Yeah. So even though. So this is something that. That I. <laughs> that when I found it, I was like, oh, that's a shame. <clears throat> but that's just the way these things go. So I'll put minus twelve hundred. Uh, I don't know why I can't select. Uh, let's just put it up to maximum. There we go. So I should be able to pitch up. As you can see, the pitch bend's being received. I'm pressing a two on here. This is, but the strings aren't being bent or stretched or tightened or however the model <laughs> describes the, the 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 action of the pitch bend. It's not happening. So that doesn't. Pitch bending doesn't affect the resonant network that we've opened up by pressing these notes down. That was the point I was trying to make. And I think I made it quite well. So that's the that's it. That's that's the thing. So I just want to demonstrate lightly with this test oscillator that should be chucking out a bit of white noise. So we've just got white noise going into the piano now. That D's ringing, ringing, ringing out. Um, what was I going to do? Let's just stick a quick filter on here. Or, oh, you know. Just 
just add another octave on this. This video is going to be longer. This is only supposed to be a short. Check this, Mads. Beep. Out. And here we go. We've got super low D there. I mean, if you're not listening on nice speakers, you might not even hear what's happening. Mm. Okay, I will <laughs> won't just listen to that for the next forty minutes. Uh, but that's that's the video. Um, so this is the video that <laughs> talks about Keno Tech Sidechain, and. Uh, so yeah, this is. I think you should watch this alongside all the other videos about how beautiful it sounds when you've got a great controller and you can play like Bach and Beethoven and stuff on it. Um, this is the other side of it. This is the other cool stuff. So uh, yeah, have just do it. Have fun. Chuck things through Piano Tech. Muck around with it. And uh, as always, go off now and do some music. Thank you for listening slash watching. Bye bye.